today, in the year 2008, if South Africa was a village of 100 inhabitants, 78 would be black, 11 white, 8 colored, and 3 Indian. 33 would be younger than 16 years of age, 5 would be older than 65, and 2 would have been born in the past year. Out of the 100 inhabitants, 13 would be HIV positive, and the average life expectancy would be the age of 51. In the past four decades, South Africa as a whole has come a long way. Yet the harsh reality that exists in the rural areas is still very much alive. In the 1970s, from a need to dispose of the cruel and unjust laws, as well as the mental oppression inherent in apartheid, the Black Consciousness Movement was born, and with it, plans by its leaders to improve the healthcare system. At the time, there was a tremendous need for sufficient health care within the South African community. Due to apartheid, hospitals that were vital to the community's survival were made inaccessible to blacks because of racial segregation. The hospitals for blacks were housed in inadequate facilities, understaffed, and located in inaccessible distances during cases of emergency. Because of this, Steve Biko and Mampele Rampele, two of the prominent leaders of the Black Consciousness Movement, became pioneers in the creation of a community health center in Zinyoka, a small rural community in King Williamstown. These two amazing leaders took it upon themselves and followed Black Consciousness ideals to create a safe place for the community of Zinyoka and surrounding areas to be medically treated. Yet, they faced many challenges when trying to begin this community health center both from the government and the community itself. This was brought to light by two of the narrators who took part in the Dickinson College Black Liberation Mosaic Oral History Project. Mr. Zanzi and Mrs. Nondalana are both permanent residents of the Zinyoka area and former employees of the Zanipilo Health Center. These two narrators have similar memories of the hardships Steve Biko and Dr. Rampele attained during those difficult times. Mr. Zanzi was the caretaker in charge of the clinic as well as a member of the Anglican Church, and Mrs. Nondalana was the cook during the opening of the Zanapilo Health Center in 1975. The Anglican Church was the primary game player in helping Steve Biko to acquire the land and supplies necessary for the health center. The apartheid government was apprehensive to the development of health facilities in the area because they knew Steve Biko wanted nothing more than the empowerment of the black race. One of the primary reasons their empowerment was prevented was the lack of adequate health care. Mr. Zanzi says, quote, The apartheid government was not in full control of the situation because everything Mr. Biko did was in the premises of the church. Although they tried by all means by enforcing their racial discrimination, they were not fully successful. This clinic has helped a lot of people teaching them, especially to young people because it created job opportunities for them." Unquote. However, the people in the media community of Zinyoka were concerned because they did not want their resources, mainly water, to be used. This sheds some light on the amount of poverty that existed in these areas during the time, a time where natural resources were scarce. Mr. Zanzi speaks about a man who played a pivotal role in the clinic acquiring a fresh water supply. His name was Mr. Ben Bikati Tiamzashe, and he supplied machines that stored water from his farm. Access to fresh water was one of the things that allowed for the continuation of the health center. After some time, the inhabitants of Zinyoka were grateful for such a health center to be available to them free of charge. According to Mr. Zanzi, part of the main focus of the clinic was to help pregnant women give birth to healthy babies using adequate facilities and equipment in the maternity ward of the health center. This proved to be crucial to the survival of the infant community in the rural areas. This clinic was essential to the betterment of the community, and Steve Biko and Dr. Rumfele, along with the Anglican Church, began an amazing institution. Unfortunately, 
after Steve Beagle's shocking and tragic death on the 11th of September 1977, the health center deteriorated and its leadership was confiscated by the government. The main sister in charge, Sister Jazivana, touches upon many current issues of the health center, which was later renamed the Zanambilo Clinic. Sister Shazibana speaks about the lack of funding from the government, which has led to many internal problems within the clinic. Some of these problems include the lack of nursing staff, further medical development, and the lack of a permanent doctor. There used to be a doctor who would come in one day out of the month, but even that is no longer available. Currently, running water is inaccessible and there are no phone lines. In order to communicate with the local hospitals, the nurses are forced to use their own personal cell phones. A maternity ward was available at the clinic, but is no longer staffed or suitable for adequate operation. Due to the lack of an ambulance, patients who require ambulatory service do not have one available. All of this, in conjunction, makes it very difficult for Sister Shazivana to run a quality health clinic that addresses the health needs of the community at large. However, Sister Shazivana, as well as the other nurses, seem determined to continue their good work, no matter what resources are available to them. Throughout its history, the Zanabilo Clinic was initially instated to empower the black community. Even through rough times, the clinic still plays an imperative role in the health standards of the community and holds true to black consciousness movement standards. If the Zanipilo Clinic was no longer available, there would be no medical treatment for the people of Zinyoka. This clinic has historical value and has created a place for the new generation of King Williamstown to have access to quality health care. Since the end of apartheid, much has been done by the South African government and by the people to improve South Africa's health crisis. Yet there is plenty left to be done, and the Zanipilo Clinic is a perfect example of this. As Mr. Zanzi says, quote, we have wishes as a church that the power of this name, Biko, will be restored again and the state of Zanabilo will also come back. Unquote. Yeah.